terrific state protected areas to understand what the wildlife populations are doing and what that information we um, advise and promote sustainable wildlife utilization. Today I'm going to talk, of, talk to you or present the work that I'm doing in the ministry on uh, studying the food sector species in a national park. This work uh, forms part of the PhD program that I'm doing at the University of Bethlehem. And what I'm going to present to you is uh, the research proposal that I'm working on. The idea here is to give you a snapshot of what I'm working on and then uh, what we all can expect to see from the work that I'm doing. So, um, we sort of pick uh, some of our topic, uh, space of ecology and population genetics of zebra species in the traditional part. That's the title of the project. Um, as part of the PhD, the research title will only be finalized once the proposal is finally approved. It can change many times, and I'm using this working title uh, called um, Assessing the Mechanisms and Intensity of Hybridization in Zebra Populations Using Ecological and Energy Approaches. So we are using multidisciplinary approaches to try and understand what is happening between the two zebra species in the national park. So okay. Um the aim, the aim of the research project is to assess and understand mechanisms and intensities of hybridization in natural populations of Atmans, mountain zebra, and plain zebra using integrated genetics and ecological approaches. There is a suspicion that these two zebra species are advertising in Western Ecosa. Uh, most of us have been to Ecosa. Uh, mountain zebra are restricted more or less to the western parts of Ecosa, uh, and plain zebra are widespread throughout the park. If we look at the population estimates for mountain zebra, we are looking at about just about 1,000 mountain zebras in Western Ecosa and about 14 to 16,000 plain zebras spread throughout uh, the entire Ecosa National Park. Now, um, why are we doing this study? So, as part of a PhD studies at the universities, require us to sort of not only think about the problem as it is in Namibia, but to think about it as a global problem. And then the study to contribute to the uh, global issue. So at the global level, we all know that there is biodiversity loss occurring at the rapid rate. We were just now talking about the blue planes that are on the heads of disappearing. So um, biodiversity as we know it is under threat. Uh, most of the time, they are disappearing simply because of human activities. Now, at all levels, biodiversity is impacted by modification of ecosystems, leading to extinction of species and loss of genetic diversity. Now, when we alter physical landscape and species distribution, it can affect gene flow and in progression by influencing the degree of contact between uh, groups of individuals. What it simply means is that uh, in a place like Ecosa, and that is what we are suspecting, for many years before 1960, artificial water provisioning was limited. So naturally, these two species were not always in contact. They all come together seven times of the year, mainly in the system seasons, and after rainfall, as the waters dry up, one zebras will retreat to the west and Place it as we retreat to the east where there are permanent uh, water points. But now, through, for instance, creating artificial water points, uh, building fences around the Kosa, we alter the landscape and we are now forcing these two species uh, to spend more and more time together. So, as it is the case elsewhere, uh, and also here in Namibia, luckily in Namibia, of course, wildlife also occurring outside of the state protected areas. But in most places, last agriculture are increasingly 
Now, when we talk about relativization, it's a subject that is not yet fully understand, understood. I think there are good side, there's a good side of relativization, and there is also a bad side of relativization. I think the good side of relativization is when it is natural, it's not man made, it's not facilitated by man. So it's a natural system taking uh, place, and maybe that leads to better results, better outcomes. But when the adaptation is uh, facilitated by men through these activities, then it becomes a problem. Now, in a in, in the closer, in the 1980s, some observations were made of uh, plain zebras that had poles that looked like plain zebra and mountain zebra. Um, this was observed during the translocations. Many of you may remember in the 1980s in the crowd, a uh, number of mountain zebras were cut, and some were removed from the crowd to avoid them from dying as a result of crowd. So, in that process, some observations were made. Um, of bigger water quality in the fossil, some photographs were taken of the market, plain zebra man that was uh, sort of uh, messing the pole. That had spread patterns that would present mountain zebra. So, people from 1980s to 1990s were asking a lot of questions about this issue of identification. Um, most people believe that this issue of identification is a problem in the western parts of the Western National Park where the two species uh, coexist. Um, a pilot study was conducted in Ecosia. <coughs> Uh, it was not a study on hybridization between the two zebra species, but it was a study that was looking at uh, specific genes responsible for disease uh, resistance in the mountain zebra. It was a comparative study comparing plain zebras in the closer with plain zebras in Cuba National Park. As part of that study, uh, some samples were collected from mountain zebra and plain zebra, and this assessment was done. And they found that there is evidence of hybridization between the two zebras species, and that it is possible that the adverb uh, of springs are fertile and that they may uh, produce uh, fertile offspring. So, but this study was never taken forward uh, because as a pilot study, this formed part of another PhD program. So now um, we decided. We decided to do a detailed research to fully understand this problem by trying to understand the spatial overlap between the two species and how that possibly leads to our decision. Basically, the background as to why we decided to do this study. So, this study has about four objectives, and I'll take you through each one of them individually. So the first objective is to assess the home ranges, habitat groups, and home range overlap of these two uh, zebra species. Trying to understand what space do they use? Is there an overlap in terms of the space that they are using? Basically, trying to understand how much of their time do they spend together. Maybe that will try and explain why the incidence is So um, that's the first objective. So in terms of home ranges, is to also try and understand their home range sizes. And I would say is the difference between their home range sizes. In terms of habitat groups, are they selecting the same resources? Are they selecting different resources? Because these two species are ecological and biologically very similar. So the expectation is that they want to uh, select similar resources, but we don't want to come to to make assumptions about it, we need an empirical study to uh, confirm that is the case. The second objective is to assess the intensity of association in mountain zebras and plain zebras. Of course, the second objective has got two sub objectives. The first one is to assess the intensity of association uh, between the two zebra species, basically, uh, to conduct tests. Collect samples, conduct tests, and see if there is indeed hybridization. 
the second object or the sub object is another second objective is to study genetic connectivity across the landscape of the objective of identifying potential barriers to the flow in mountain zebra and plain zebra. So, what this we are trying to understand what is the um, landscape genetics like of these two species is their connectivity across the landscape where the zebras are found. This will take the study outside of Potosa to places like Potosa, Palamba, and Freda field to see if there's any connectivity that's for modern zebras. Um, and then for plain zebras, most likely the study will be confined to a person in Snow Park because we've got very limited number of plain zebras outside of the uh, central western uh, areas. The third objective would be to conduct uh, multi species habitat suitability and landscape connectivity modeling to correlate in flow work landscape connectivity for the two species. The idea is to try and understand what are the suitable habitats for mountain zebra and also the plain zebra. Are these suitable habitats in protected areas or are they outside protected areas? If they are outside protected, protected areas, then the person is to try and understand uh, what is landscape connectivity like. Are the areas, are the corridors that we need to identify through mobile? So that we can help the uh, most protection of those uh, uh, connectivity or corridors to ensure that there is uh, in future some uh, connectivity or suitable habitat to ensure long term survival of apartments, mountain zebra, and plain zebra. The fourth objective is then to use results from objective one, two, and three to make management recommendations. I will come back later to the kind of management recommendations we want to make. But then, what's the first objective? We have to try and understand what is the space space use like. Are there any other factors that impact on their space use? That's the second objective. We will try to understand if they spend more time together, is that really the hybridization? And if, if it leads to hybridization, then what objective? Um, what the for that objective, we have to find suitable areas where mountain zebra and plain zebra could occur, maybe not now but in the future, and then we put all those um, information or data sets together to make some management recommendations to ensure that there is not so much hypothesis taking place, and uh, these species are, are protected or conserved. So now we, we are making a number of um, hypotheses um, or some predictions in terms of what the result of data will show. Now, for objective one, we are predicting that um, plain zebras will have large home ranges uh, compared to mountain zebra, and that these differences in terms of home ranges will remain the same throughout the season. We are making this assumption. Prediction is simply because we believe that mountain zebras are uh, restricted to Western Edosa, which is a very small part uh, where their most suitable range is. So um, the rest of the suitable areas for mountain zebra is outside of Edosa National Park. But then we know there is a road and there is a fence that potentially. Uh, Reduce or prevents movement to the west. So, mountain zebra are restricted to western Edosa, and therefore we think they will have smaller home ranges compared to uh, plain zebras. Um, the second um, hypothesis under that objective is that because of the similar biological and ecological requirements by these two species, they are both racers, uh, they are both uh, preferred prey for lions. And so on, they are water dependent because of that, and they both respond to rainfall. Wherever there is rain, they will commit that area to benefit from the new grass that's growing. Because of those similar requirements, we are uh, making an expectation or a prediction that both species will select the same resources. So there will be no differences in terms of the resources that they select. 
but basically, I'm hoping that because of that, I will spend more and more time together that may further lead to uh, easy things that can happen. Basically. We are also predicting that um, there will definitely be overlap in their own basis because they are most likely to use similar resources, similar space. Um, and because of that, because they are also water dependent, there will be many use of the same water. And because of that, we suspect that there would be some level of overlap uh, in the basis of the two separate species. In terms of the objective two, um, we expect hybridization uh, to take place in the first and next single part. So we have the study we hope. We hope or we predict that we will find hybridization between the two separate species. Um, okay, and then we also expect to see what is uh, what is called the hybridization zone, uh, and we expect that zone to be a narrow zone that's restricted to Western Cape zone. By this, we mean that uh, we will not see any uh, indication or incidences of hybridization the further we move away to the west, where there is only mountain zebra. And further, we move to the east where there is only plain zebra. But we expect to see or predict to see a decision mm -hmm. around Western Ecosa where the two species um, overlap in the um, Because mountain zebra are sort of isolated, if I can use that word, uh, by fences in Western Ecosa, we are predicting that they have very low genetic. Uh, diversity compared to mountain zebra because the plain zebra, the gene flow is restricted by fences, there is no contact uh, from outside populations, populations to the west, and we are uh, predicting that we see high levels of inbreeding, low genetic diversity, and so on. Um, because Edosa, or in terms of plain zebra, there is about 16,000. Plain zebras and they are all uh, moving all over Ecosa. So there is a healthy source of animals available that keeps the plain zebra population genetics diverse. Okay, um, now in terms of um, Predictions for our for objective three. Um, because of the reasons that I have provided, we are predicting that the Tosa National Park as a whole uh, has complemented suitable habitat for mountain zebra because from mountain zebra prepared uh, media areas, rocky terrain, and it's only limited to the or it's limited to the western parts of, of the park. And that's where you find a suitable habitat for mountain zebra. The rest of it is outside of the uh, of the protected area. So, so that that's our uh, prediction. Um, we are also predicting that because of the habitat outside of the Edosa National Park, that the only suitable habitat for plain zebra is within the Edosa National Park. Um, there is also potential habitat outside of Edosa National Park for plain zebra, but that is restricted by presence of fences and roads that can sort of inhibit the movement of this uh, two zebra species. So, in terms of objective four, uh, here we don't really have predictions, but we are trying to predict the kind of recommendations we can make to improve the situation for the two species in the Edosa operator Edosa landscape is to establish and safeguard connectivity between suitable habitats. So we are hoping and predicting that we will identify suitable habitats as part of this uh, exercise and that there will be corridors connecting um, Edosa with suitable habitats. And the idea would be to um, help promote those suitable habitats for both plain zebra and mountain zebra. Maybe more applicable for mountain zebra than plain zebra because if you compare the two species, 
the mountain face is a is what a better population for the status for three for that, uh, whereas only about thousand or so mountains it has a protected. Um, another prediction or recommendation we would like to make based on the findings for the study is to rotate and if necessary, uh, close some of the artificial water points in Western Ecosol and sort of promote the pre 1960 uh, movement patterns. This is not before the water points were uh, established. I think most water points were established around the 1950s, but in the closer. So the idea is to uh, try and mimic the pre 1960 uh, movement patterns uh, of the two separate species. The main objective there would be to reduce sustained co occurrence between the two uh, species within. To reduce incidence of the climate decision. And then to make sure that all of these recommendations are working, uh, one way we can check on that would be to conduct regular uh, genetics monitoring, population genetic monitoring of the two several species. Maybe every five years, every ten years, uh, we could monitor this population to see if there are any changes as a result of the recommendations that we made so far. So um, that's the study side um, for the Ecosa. So you can, you can clearly see all the red dots are the artificial water points or water points available for, for water. So we will confine our study to this area, uh, which is called Western Ecosa, the area west of um, Olympus West. Uh, that's where the, the study will be. Will be conducted. So you can see there is plenty of water points around, and we are hoping that these are the water points that are leading to the species spending more time together because they are water dependent. They have to gain almost every second to third day. So the map uh, over there is the vegetation um, map of Ecosa. Um, you can clearly see this line. Yellow or brown, that's the area that's the area of land and smaller plants around it. Um, yeah. so, so, this is now um, some of the animals. So, as part of this study, we colored 14 zebra species, uh, seven mountain zebra, and seven plain zebra. And over a two year period, this was their distribution throughout the park. So, as you can see, their concentration was limited or restricted to the western part of the Ocean National Park. We had one, we had one mountain silver that went all the way up to, up to this area. Um, suspect uh, maybe uh, potentially it could. Uh, where, where the animals also do not destroy more or less, you find um, suitable habitat for mountain zebra and further west. And then there is also one animal that went all the way up there. From the, from the study, uh, not related to this one, but a different study that was conducted in, in Ecosa, around uh, central Ecosa, they found two groups of plain zebras. There is a group of plain zebra that uh, is resident throughout the year in that particular area, and there is one group that is migratory. So every year in the dry season, those zebras will migrate to areas where there is more water. And I think the, the main reason why they were migrating was food and water. So, so um, it is possible that animals can still uh, migrate in this system. That is why we are uh, hoping to make those recommendations to. Uh, or rotate some of those water points to allow animals to um, make those migrations. In terms of the genetic samples, because the study is based on movement data and genetic uh, samples. So um, samples were collected throughout the known sort of range of mountain zebra and plain zebra. The mountain zebra, as you all know, is restricted to the western. Uh, parts of Namibia, 
um, the first one is not part of the rest, the first one is not part is sort of the easternmost uh, range of the mountain river, and from there they are restricted, they appear around this area further down to the south. Whereas the Plain Zebras, um, their westernmost range extends up to the western parts of Oposa. Uh, in historical times, there were reports of Plain Zebra up in the Kausoka, but I think over the years, they uh, restricted further uh, east and they are now restricted. Their westernmost point is around Oposa, and then they are going to go up. Go up uh, the, the samples sort of meaningful and to make comparison this year we collected samples also in Botswana for place in the who are um, in Botswana we collected samples in Namibia in um, uh, Mahambo area and then also in Mandiri National Park also in Botswana so we collected Tissue samples as well as uh, pet samples. Uh, pet samples. Uh, the same was done for the mountain zebra. In some places, we collected skin, skin, skin samples from the dry skins. Most places, it was the healthy uh, tissue samples that we collected. So, all these samples were sent to Germany, uh, uh, the lab that we collaborated with the project. Now, in terms of the research schedule or the timeline, um, this research is conducted through the University of the Red Public Plant in South Africa. Uh, it was called the Center for African Ecology. And it's been done in partnership with the Technical University of Munich in Germany. So, the Center of African Ecology is very strong in the field of nuclear ecology, uh, whereas the Technical University of Munich. From in terms of uh, genetics work. That's why uh, the two universities are working together in, uh, to try and sense out of the super um, movement of the population. So, this is part of the piece to study, and it's planned to be completed by 2022. Normally, PhDs are a four year program. Expected to complete the work within a year. Uh, this research will be supported by the Ministry of Environment, Forestry, and Tourism. So the following was funded by the Ministry uh, in 2015 and was Some part of the uh, genetic sampling was also funded and supported by the Ministry. Um, we had yet then um, under their program called Go Green Fund.